This is Lady Green from The Quiet Storm. Always keeping it growing and sexy, baby. And you're watching ThisIsFifty.com. Check it out. DJ Thoreau, a.k.a. Thoreau Zano, Bridge to the Streets. Watching the hottest in the streets. But right now, you're watching the hottest on the radio. Right here at ThisIsFifty.com. <laughs> you're sitting here with a radio legend, man. Wow. A radio legend. And you may not know who he is until you see and hear his voice. Until you hear his voice. Introduce yourself. <laughs> My name is Lenny Gray, and I'm the host of The Quiet Storm. Um, <laughs> it's a syndicated show now, but we're based here in New York on WBLS, and uh, I'm just standing on the shoulders, Brother Thurl, of giants. That's all I'm doing. Is that what you're doing? That's all I'm doing. Listen, I got to tell you, your voice, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I had a couple girls, doggy style, right? They're listening to listen to your show, you know? He's like, put that Lenny Gray on, uh, you know, put that on it. You know, you help me get a lot of, you help me get a lot. Yeah, yeah. Then I did my yeah, job. you did your job. <laughs> I'm just put that out there. Look, look, look. The bottom line, <laughs> I need to do my job. Now, now the crazy part about it, see, I, I, again, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Right, okay. So I learned from the old school, and I know I'm considered to be old school now, okay. but I learned from the old school about romancing mm-hmm. and, and setting up the ambiance. Right. And, and, and believe it or not, I can be real with you, right, Thurl? You got to be. It's, this is 50. All right, so when I was like 21, mm-hmm. got into older relationship, my first older relationship okay. I've ever been in. She was 12 years my senior. Mm. She turned me out. <laughs> as, as she should. <laughs> <laughs> she turned me out. She as was a beautiful should. woman. Right. I'm not even going to say her name, but she was a beautiful woman, and she turned me out. And I remember the first time, and obviously I remember because I'm about to tell you the deal. Okay. I'm about to share my life. I'm spilling my life to you right now, right? Hey, I, this is a 50 exclusive. Hey. Go. Only DJ Thurl can get this. Hey, you hear that? Say it again. Only DJ Thurl <laughs> can get this. All right. So the bottom line is this. I went over to her house. It was in the evening. And when she opened up the door, the entire apartment was 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 dark. Right. But all these candles were around. Mm. She had this beautiful black negligee on. Uh-huh. Oh, Victoria's Secret. Mm. Her body was spectacular. And I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And I was open. So the reason why I talk about candles and romance and ambiance, I was taught. Was and, and I think if we're not paying attention as men to learn that, you know, I learned it through that source. But, you know, there's other ways of learning how to romance. Right. We're going to be losing the track, man. So I'm just, I'm just trying to kind of pass the torch or pass the awareness and play some wonderful slow jams and right. help you continue to hey, uh, bend a few people right? over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bend them over, baby. Bend, bend them, them over. over. Exactly. Something tells me I'm going to step out on the limb here. Something okay. tells me you were a Barry White fan. <laughs> this motherfucker is a psychic. <laughs> you're right. You know, you're absolutely right. Barry White, right. Isaac Hayes, mm. uh, the two baritone. And, and I mm. had the honor and privilege mm. of meeting... Working with one mm, nice. and meeting the other. Okay. Isaac Hayes is the one who was responsible for my head. I see. Okay. So, uh. Um, Carried on tradition here. He shaved my head. Oh, did he? Yeah, no, he literally, he literally? shaved my hair off. Wow. So, I, I'm honored to have been blessed by one of the baritones right. of, uh, of music. What was yeah. it like meeting Barry White? A dream come true because my mom was really, uh, into Barry White. Right. <laughs> when I was a kid. And. The honor was for me to introduce my mom to Barry White because right. Barry White was a part of 98.7 KISS. Right. He was the morning man um, before KISS went away. Um, so not only is he born on the same day as my mother, mm. but my mom was, you know, googly eyes, especially as all the women around her age at the time, because right. he wore the, the chains and bare chest, and he was a sexy icon. Right. And, <laughs> and I didn't want to introduce my mom to this <laughs> motherfucker. I really didn't. but. He was a legend, right. and um, because he was a legend, and but one of the most humblest, creative minds of music, and just as a regular person, man, uh, that you could ever possibly imagine. So right. the honor was mine. Okay. And, and so again, I'm standing on the shoulders of kings. Kings. King. All right. So let's talk about why you're standing on the shoulders of kings. How did you get your start in radio? Radio. I didn't have radio even. In, it wasn't even on the radar for me. Okay. Uh, I, I thought I was going to be. Michael Jackson the second. I, I <laughs> oh, was a, a for real, yeah, man. <laughs> I couldn't do it like Mike, you know. Right. Um, but he was born on the same side. I was singing that started at nine years old. Mm. Uh, I didn't 
think about radio until I got to Kingsborough Community College in Brooklyn. Okay. And someone introduced me to the radio station. I was like, oh shit. Right. I, I was really, I was really uh, impressed by what I saw. And then I just, I said, I want to do this. Right. And uh, not not losing my heart for music, because mm -hmm. even to this day, I, I have a fond appreciation and respect for singers. Okay. Actually, I'm kind of more critical and, right. and, and detailed when it comes to how good you do your art. Because I can't do it, but I respect those who can right. and who do it well. Right. When did you realize, because you, uh, you have a distinguishing voice, you have what we call a radio voice, like you have it. When did you realize or when did people start commenting well, on How that? comes that doesn't give me no pussy though? That's what, <laughs> you I, gotta hang out with me, I got you. Okay, you sure? <laughs> we, all right, we, he, shook, he shook on that though, he shook on that. He shook on that ladies, he shook on that. I got you. All right, you're a man of your word. Okay, I need that, I need that. Because everybody says, hey man, you know, I had a couple of babies, I bent over a couple of broads, yeah. and, and yet I, I'm still and trying to have a wife. Here. I'm trying to find a wife, man. I need at least one kid before I get old, 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 oh, old. Oh we're gonna you know? make it happen. So when did I, you know what, um, I think the cultivation of, um, of um, just singing initially mm -hmm. kind of helped my voice. My mom said, I had my tonsils out mm -hmm. at five years old. And she said, by the time I turned 10, my, my voice had started to change. Mm -hmm. It got a little deeper than the average 10 year old. So um, I think it's because of that, that helped. And, right. and then, but I, you know, again, singing, you t I'm talking about, I don't know if you know about the different kinds of voices, but I was the first tenor falsetto. Mm. So similar to like that Earth with a Fire, Earth, Wind, Fire Philip right. Bailey, the high voice guy. There you go. <laughs> I could do that with ease back <laughs> in the on, day. On, yeah. I can't do shit the now. Like that. <laughs> nah, not at all. But I've lost the, um, you know, it's a true saying though, DJ Thurl, if you don't use it, you lose it. Right. So I lost the confidence in singing. I, I can't sing word shit. I could talk my ass off. But right. Um, so I think it's a lot of things. I think it's just uh, listening to the professionals once I fell into right. radio and started paying attention to the golden voices that I heard in the here right. in New York. Well, you could do a hell of an intro on an R&B song. That, that should be <laughs> That should be crazy before you, anybody even starts singing. Bless. <laughs> Bless. Bless, man. Bless. You, you know, I'm, I'm thankful, man. I'm thankful to God. Uh, first and foremost, because that's my father, uh, really, first and foremost, uh, for giving me this gift and, and blessing me with the opportunity to share right. it. Let's talk about your radio show, Quiet Storm. Quiet Storm. Um, yeah. did, you, did you come up with that concept, or how did that transpire? DJ Thurl, I'm standing on the shoulders of what? Legends. Legends, giants. Giants. Um, the, okay, I'm going to give you the real deal. The Quiet Storm show actually started in Washington D.C. Okay. On the on uh, at WHUR. That was the original con that was the original kickoff. Miss Kathy Hughes mm -hmm. came up with this concept, and uh, the brother's no longer with us. His name is Melvin Lindsay. Was the first Quiet Storm radio personality. Okay. But growing up here in Brooklyn, I'm a Brooklyn boy, born and raised. Um, we didn't know about that. Mm. Uh, we knew about Mr. Vaughn Harper. Harper. Vaughn Harper is the legend of legend. I sound like Mickey Mouse. Damn. <laughs> I sound like Imagine Mickey Mouse that. in comparison to the texture and the, and the deepness of his voice. And not to mention Vaughn Harper, man, was a New York City icon because he was he was so skilled on the court. Okay. You know, he went to he went he had an opportunity to go to uh, uh, Syracuse University, but his knees got blown out. But he was a superstar on the court, and um, and his his legend his legendary status just ruled New York City. Right. So not knowing that I was going to be doing this radio thing at all, it all started coming into my ears. Right. You know, him and Frankie Crocker and uh, Jerry mm -hmm. Bledsoe. We're talking about, if you listen to those three guys, the texture of their voices and their style and their swag, um, I think that's how I kind of got not knowing I was going to be doing this. You know, right. you never know what God has intention for you. So I think all that helped. Right. At the you, end you ever thought about doing an R&B album where you're not singing, but I'm you're talking? talking. You know, DJ Thurl, uh, I'm going to let another secret out. This is only for you, brother. It's only, it's only for you, my man. Only for you. So recently, I just finished working with Full Force on a secret project, um, talking, um, creating that ambiance. We're going to see where it goes. I'm going to dabble a little bit more. Again, uh, you said Barry White earlier. Barry White, man, if you go back and listen to not those CD, well, they got them on CD now, but those albums. That shit used to be like 12, 15 minutes of that motherfucker just talking. Talking, right, right. That's why. I just mean. talking. Right. I mean, <laughs> they're just pulling right. down the panties. Exactly. Bang, you right. know? Uh, so 
I want. I, I, I'm a little. Vaughn Harper was a sophisticated gentleman. Right. I'm a little nastier. You know what I'm saying? I create a little more, but I got to be respectful at the same right. time. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna. Might, I'm gonna. There's, there may be a, a, there's a needed lane for that, you know, because no, there I, is. nobody's doing that. But I like to fuse that a different way. I like to fuse that. You know, if, if I was ever so blessed to be uh, to to be working with with you know some great hip hop artists, right, uh, and some great singers, right, you know, right. I need to cut you off. I'll forget. I got ADD sometimes. <laughs> okay, no problem. We all got that. We all got. <laughs> so speaking of the Quiet Storm, have you ever interviewed or spoke with the legend Smokey Robinson? <laughs> I've been blessed. I've been blessed. Um, Smokey and Robinson and I, I like to say we're pretty good friends. Oh, Just as much friends as me with Cool DJ Red Alert. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I got another story about Red Alert. Oh, <laughs> Almost. But wow. yes, uh, I have been blessed with uh, not only uh, bonding and, and building a great rapport with Smokey right. Robinson, uh, the man who created the Quiet Storm song. Yeah, that's why I said that. That's the shit. Um, but... But we're real cool and real, real wonderful down to earth brother. Right. Um, so, yes, I have. Right. Now you yeah. seem to have the utmost respect for DJ Red Alert. And, yeah, oh, yeah. And I want to share something with you before you explain why. Okay. DJ Red Alert is the reason why I wanted to become a DJ. That's what I grew up, up listening to 90.7 Kiss FM. They had the rap attack, and then on our other station, WBLS, Mr. Magic and Marlon Wall. Yep. I used to go back and forth, <laughs> listening to the shit, and I used to get my ass beat because my I would record over my mother's gospel tape. Take what? Tape. I would take the tissue out, put it in the tape, and record. <laughs> I'm glad you're still with us, brother. Because your mama would have whipped okay, you. I, I got so many beatings. I could imagine. And she used to beat my ass every Friday. I knew I was getting a beating every Friday and Saturday because I would take her tape and I just had to do it. I was a fiend. But your mama's proud right. of you now, though. Well, she, yeah, she's proud of me. Look at this. And Red Alert is the reason why I wanted to become a DJ. Wow. Now, that tells me you're you're from Brooklyn, so obviously you know about hip hop yeah, clearly. Yeah, so yeah. What, what's your hip hop? How has hip hop influenced what you do, or you know, in general? Well, not only hip hop has, has influenced. I mean, I, we understand the origins of hip hop started right. in the Bronx, but you know, Brooklyn came up pretty pretty strong right. in following. and following. We all did. I mean, it influenced me by allowing me to relate to my lifestyle. Mm. You know, I mean, I grew up. I didn't grow up with no silver spoon in my in right. my mouth. I grew up in the heart of Crown Heights, and I was raised in East New York and and, and Brownsville and, and Bed Stuy. So, the lifestyle, the lifestyle. You know, the music initially, it's transcended a lot to where it is now. Right. But it was talking about our lives in so many ways. You know, we can relate. You know, there, there was there was obscure shit. You know, back in the day. If you want to go back to the beginnings of hip hop, you want to go back to the last poets right. where, where they first started. You know, talking Real about stuff. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But and and when I was a kid, my brother was was into the. You know, he's very proactive and pro. Uh, Pro, pro righteous when it came to our black movement, so I was aware consciously of of hip hop from the Gil Scott Heron days. That's why I could relate to Kendrick Lamar and J Cole to right. now, you know. Okay. Um, but so it, it was just a part of my life right. as it became a part of all of our lives, right. you know. So hip hop. That's why I love hip hop. You know, I do Quiet Storm like a motherfucker. Right. And I love R and B, but I love hip hop too. Right. I just want to put that out there because people may misconstrue. That yeah. No. No. Look, right. man. You'll see me in a spot, and I'm dancing to Rick Ross and everybody else. Like, listen to trap music and everything. I, I know I don't, I'm an OG, and, <laughs> and you know when you're OG when you're in a club, and a motherfucker comes to you and says, "Yo, OG, uh, can I talk? With, are, is she with you?" <laughs> I'm like. Nah, nah, she ain't with me, man. Let me move my ass over. You, that's when you know you're getting old. You know what I'm saying? You, you try old. to look young as you get old. I'm trying right. to keep my sexy up. Right. But, uh, you know, that's how you know you're old. Yo, yo, OG, or... You might have to I talk to your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I don't have any children, so watch out. I'm coming for everybody right now. As long as you're looking good, I'm coming for you, ladies. Right. Um... So yeah, man, getting back to, uh, to to what you had said, mm -hmm. I, I have a similar story, you know. Not knowing that I was going to get into this radio thing, I too was listening to Red Alert right. on 98.7 .7 Kiss. I listened to uh, Wendy Williams on 98.7 right. .7 Kiss. Um, and, I, and then, you know, once I got into this radio game, didn't know if I ever would work in my home. Right. So again, I'm living a blessed life and I thank God every moment that I have. So when I had the blessing to actually start working at, at 98.7 mm -hmm. KISS, who do I meet? The legendary cool DJ Red Alert. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the most humblest and, and down-to-earth brothers you could ever meet. And you know, to understand uh, all that he has 
accomplished and what he has done for hip hop and his contribution to the skill of DJ. Right. It, it kind of just speaks volumes for itself. Right. Did you know, and I know he hates me saying this, but I hope he sees this, I'll but did you it. know? I'll send it to him. <laughs> make sure you see it. That cool DJ Red Alert is in the Rock and Roll Hall, Hall of, Fame. of Fame. I did not know that. And he should be there. Bong. Congratulations to cool DJ well Red Alert. No, no, well deserved. Who's your favorite guest you ever had? If, if there's one. That's another hard thing to talk about. As you have yeah, a lot of guests, well, you, know, well, you, you asked if I if I met Smokey, so you know if I'm gonna go old school first. So Smokey, Barry White, Isaac Hayes, hmm. Shaka Khan, um, Lionel Richie, Damn. the Commodores. I met all of the Jacksons. Sat down with the Jacksons, with the exception of Mike. You never met Mike. Never How is that possible when you interviewed the Jackson Five? He was late. This, this, no, no, well, <laughs> he, unfortunately, he had already transitioned. Oh, okay. Uh, so he already passed away. Oh, uh, that was all. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. but okay. I probably was one of the lucky few that had the last opportunity when all the Jackson brothers came together. Now, you know, we don't know what's going on with the Jacksons. They're a pretty interesting family. Um, but uh, yeah, so on their last tour, right. I was able to get all the brothers together. And it's so funny, one of the fun moments for me to just, because again, they were my, they were, I, you know, I idolized them because I thought I was going to be second Everybody Michael, did. you know? And they became a part of our family, right. uh, old school style. But the, the funny part about that interview was after the interview. And we have, at the radio station, there's one bathroom for women and one bathroom for men. So uh, they said, well, where's the bathroom at? So I told Marlon, I thought the bathroom's right there. Two minutes later, Jackie said, well, where's the bathroom? I was like, the bathroom's right there. But I said, uh, I, you know, there's only one stall in there. Right. Then Jermaine came up and he said, well, where's the bathroom? I said, the bathroom's right there. I'm like, no, 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 there's only one stall. He said, man, we grew up in, 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 in Gary, Indiana. We, we were poor, man. We all shared up there. Same bathroom. We're all brothers. They all went into the bathroom <laughs> at the same fucking time. I, was, I found that to be so funny. <laughs> you know, but you know they're brothers. You know, there's nothing. That is a story you would never hear. You would never like, hear, man. Never so hear I was wow. like, oh shit, these are some real down to earth motherfuckers. So you, you got know? five people in one store. Four, you know, because no Michaels out there, right? So Four yeah, people in one bathroom. One, one bathroom, store. you know. I was like, oh shit. Go okay, Gary, Indiana, man, hood. Right. You know, hood. Come on, I mean, you know, look, they raised, they 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 rose to fame and fortune, but my right. motherfuckers come from the hood. You know, I mean, they come from poor lifestyles and you know just like our athletes you know right. their their fame and fortune and talents brings them to a whole different level right if anybody want to check out your show and get more familiar with what you got going on how can they do that you know um, we are on the iHeart radio app uh, that's WBLS uh, it comes on Monday through Fridays Monday through Thursday 7 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time uh, but the show has become a syndicated show, so you can catch us in Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Checks. 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 <laughs> um, uh, we're in the Caribbean. Um, oh, he's out of here. <laughs> well, you know, no, I'm not out of here. I'm not out of here. Trust me. It sounds greater than what it really is. I'm telling you. They all say that. <laughs> look, look. DJ Thor, I'm not going to lie, man. I came in here dropping gems on you, man. I, I gave you exclusive yeah, so shit. Yeah, yeah. So, no, no. I'm keeping it real. You know, it's a struggle. It's a struggle these days in the radio. But, um... But if you go to WBLS.com, because that's the international brand. I mean, you, we get people from... WBLS has been around since the 70s. Yeah. So, um, literally, we get people from all over the world. Right. From Africa, China, Spain, listening to our shows like every night. They just right. fixed on that radio station because it's been around for so long. Thank you for coming. The honor, man. Again. Thank you so for, Thank you. for the invitation. I appreciate Thank you. you. Much continued Lenny success. Green, DJ Thorough, Hottest in the Streets. we got some exclusive... You're only gonna hear that here, right here, man. And like always, yep. when you see us, when you see us, when he is, <laughs> respect. Ad, yeah. my man. Yeah. <laughs>